Is the Sabbath day of Yahweh the cornerstone of the Ten Commandments? I love the Sabbath day, the way it makes me feel. Welcome to Revealing the Truth. I'm John Fisher and with me is David Brett. We introduced this uh, episode asking the question, is the Sabbath day the cornerstone of the Ten Commandments? And I believe it is so. Uh, what happens on the Sabbath? It's a day of rest. A, mm -hmm. a day not just to lay down and rest, but it's a day to separate ourselves from the world, from strife from from working and create you know i mean work is work <laughs> we we focus there's chaos there's questions there's problems that have to be solved at, at when we work mm -hmm. but the seventh day sabbath the one set apart the one consecrated and blessed by the creator of the universe is set aside for us sabbath was made for man not man for the sabbath it's, it's, uh, there's no requirements to work on the Sabbath. In fact, it's, you're required not to. Mm -hmm. But we are required to congregate. It is a holy convocation. Um, <clears throat> it's a convocation that, that happens every week. I mean, there are seven holy convocations every year that we also must not work upon uh, that are set aside. Um, they're all symbolic of the Messiah. Now, who's the master of the Sabbath? And we might extend that to not just the weekly seventh-day Sabbath, but to all the Sabbaths because they're all about him. Mm -hmm. Passover, unleavened bread, sheaf wave offering, Pentecost, um, trumpets, atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles, the last great day. So now These all point to the Messiah and what he, his mission is here on earth. So not only could we say that he's the cornerstone of the Sabbath and the Ten Commandments, he's the cornerstone of the Sabbaths, plural, mm -hmm. and, of, and of all of Scripture. Right. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't object to that statement at all. Yeah. I, I think that that's absolutely true. But how can this, the, the Sabbath day be a cornerstone? Well, in, in this regard, it's the time that's set aside for us to focus on what uh, Yahweh has given to us. It's a time to focus, not that we don't have to focus the rest of the week. Um, that commandment is to work six days a week. <laughs> it's a commandment. But on, on the day of rest, um, we are to focus. We are to meet together and discuss scripture, to read the word of Yahweh, to understand why the Messiah walked to the way of, of his father. We are to do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and as, as his custom was, he went and, uh, you know, kept the Sabbath day on, in, uh, at that time mm -hmm. and even read, of course, the scripture on the Sabbath. Right, yeah. and there's, uh, there's uh, the, the New Testament basically is the testament of Messiah, mm -hmm. and there's nowhere in it that testifies to some other day. Any other day other than the seventh day that was consecrated by the creator of the universe is not a day of rest according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so confusing to me to see um, this whole world, well, one third of uh, the population, two billion people, who believe something different than what the Bible says. It's, I just don't understand. And even though I was in, in churchianity, attending church uh, for most of my life, I couldn't see it. It took the spirit of Yahweh to um, help me understand. He opened my eyes and he opened my ears to hear mm -hmm. the word of Yahweh. And what we see today is stemming all the way back to the fourth century and uh, the foundation there being <coughs> Catholicism, mm -hmm. essentially with Constantine, a Roman emperor, who basically consolidated pagans with, with true believers and formed a, a new religion, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it becomes new when it's not the original. 
it was politically motivated. He wanted um, his empire reaching from England through Spain and Italy and Greece and what we call Turkey right now and uh, even down to Egypt and across the, the countries of Northern Africa. All those, those nations belong to the, em the emperor of Rome and he wanted mm -hmm. them to have one religion. Well, the primary religion was uh, sun worship, which had been, you know, ever since Babylon, basically. Mm -hmm. So this new religion was coming up, a belief in the Messiah. And so he combined them two together. That's why uh, we, we, I say we, in our nation celebrate Christmas, the fourth day after the, the winter solstice. That's the, that's the time when the, the sun and it's moving in its arc across the sky is, is visible. It's the birth of the sun god birth of the sun. Uh, Easter, Easter is uh, a woman, yes, a goddess of mm -hmm. fertility. So you can imagine how they celebrated that. Mm -hmm. And even worse, I mean, it's, it's terrible to think of celebrating Easter. And the reasons these would be wrong is? They're an abomination according to Yahweh because he mm -hmm. says, do not honor me in the ways that the nations honor their gods. Yeah. And if we are doing that, we are we are standing and holding our fist against Yahweh in that, doing that. That's interesting because in the last episode we looked at Revelation chapter 21 in which he basically states that no abomination will be allowed, those that commit mm -hmm. abominations will be allowed into New Jerusalem. So not mm -hmm. only do you have to go in through one of the 12 gates of Israel, you'll not be going in if you commit any uh, abominations and that's an abomination yeah. to take ways of the pagan nations and, and worship Yahweh that way. Right. And our response here to that is not to condemn people because they are being taught something that's wrong. We understand, I mean, at least sure. I do. I, I was raised in that mm -hmm. and I believe that wholeheartedly. I had many emotional experiences um, worshiping on Christmas and Easter and, and all that because of what it meant to me. But it took an act of Yahweh, <laughs> His Spirit, to show me the light, to, to open my eyes that I could see what's going on. And all and <laughs> the first scripture that was given to me was Romans 3, 4 that says that Yahweh be true and every man a liar. Well, we are of the flesh. We, we preach what we believe is true. And that's just part of what being human is all about. But if we're teaching something that's contrary to the word of Yahweh, then we're not teaching the truth and we're not teaching in the spirit, it's my belief. So many people will say as a way of um, not having to obey the law of Yahweh that well, it's too hard, no one can do it. No one can do it. So does that mean we shouldn't even try? Well, it's not even what Yahweh says. Yahweh says it's not too far from you. It's, it's right. not out of your reach. Right. You can do it in other words. Deuteronomy 30 uh, verses 11 through 14 says, for this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you. In other words, it's understandable. You can do it, basically. Mm -hmm. Nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. So in your mouth, what does that mean? It means that, <laughs> I mean, how can you say something that's not in your mind, mm -hmm. right? I, so the law is the tutor that brings us to the Messiah. If we don't know the law, then how can we know Messiah? That was the same argument that the, that the Messiah gave to the Pharisees. You preach Moses, I'm paraphrasing. If you knew Moses, then you would recognize me. Because basically, Yahshua is the word of Yahweh. He is the law of Yahweh. He walked perfectly according to the, the will of his Father. And so, to be able to speak the truth, we have to be taught in the truth. And uh, when it says uh, that this commandment needs to be in your heart, what does that mean? Well, the heart is a symbol, a metaphor for our emotions. So what kind of emotions is Yahweh hoping that we will have in our heart that we might obey? Well, obviously love. A and what is love? 
Love is, is emotion. It's a sense of safety and security. It's a sense of hope. It's a sense of empowerment. If you, if you understand the word and you understand the, the work that Messiah has done for us, there's nothing to be afraid of in this earth. What can man do to me? I mean, when we are baptized, it's symbolic for our death. Death of what? Death to sin. Death oh, to transgression of the law of Yahweh. That's what sin is. It couldn't be clearer. And you mentioned about the Messiah being essentially blameless, spotless, walking in the way of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter understood this, Second Peter 3 and verse 14. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, speaking of a new heavens and new earth in which righteousness will dwell, mm -hmm. uh, Yahweh's not coming down until things are purified. But it says, uh, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, just like the Messiah. Right. Yeah. yeah. James says that as well. You know, what is pure religion? Well, it's uh, to take care of the orphans and the widows and remain spotted from the world. Unspotted, yes. Yeah. Right, unspotted from the world, which means to walk as purely as you can in the word of Yahweh. Um, if you look to the book of Luke in chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, we read, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of Yahweh would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of Yahweh does not come with observation. Now that word observation is the Greek word peritoresios, peritoresios, which means to keep or detain as a possession. So he, Yahshua is saying the kingdom of Yahweh does not come with possession. You don't possess the kingdom. Um, then verse 21, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of Yahweh is within you. Where? In our mouths and in our hearts. Yeah. What, it's, it's what stems from the heart comes out of the mouth. Right. And that, that can make us unclean. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think about the, what yeah, Yahshua said. Right. Our, our hearts, our tongues. I mean, we are wicked. We are of the flesh. That, that is certainly true. Um, and all of us human beings working, you know, walking on this planet, but we are to strive to become perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Mm -hmm. The word perfect is an un unattainable goal in our own minds, and our own will, but that there's no cause for us not to attempt to do that. That's what we're called to do, is to understand the Word and do all that we can to pray, to read the Scripture, to meet with people who are of like mind. Mm -hmm. um, Paul talks about how we should consider others more important than ourselves. Well, this is where we, we find this love, this, this heart, is in connection with other people who love us and we love them. We feel a sense of connection, a sense of community, a sense of um, innocence. Um, if, if you know, we confess ourselves to our, our brethren and they forgive us, I mean, we are to be towards one another in the same way that Messiah was to us. This is what we are called to do. Did you know that the Heavenly Father's name has been purposely covered up in the Bible almost 7,000 times? It was done in an effort to protect people from blaspheming the sacred name. But because of this doctrine, people have broken the third commandment. It's time to come out of man-made errors and into the true worship of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. To learn more, request your free in-depth study entitled The Mistaken J. Write to YAIY. 2963 County Road 233, Kingdom City, Missouri 65262, or visit us online at yaiy.org. You may also call toll free 1 877 642 4101. Do you understand 
that the kingdom of Yahweh is within us. Uh, and as we read um, in, in the, uh, the Torah, in, in Deuteronomy, we are to have uh, the word of Yahweh in our mouths and in our hearts. Mm -hmm. um, and then we go back also uh, into in the prophets in Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14, to read more about why the Sabbath is a cornerstone of the Ten Commandments. Isaiah 58, verse 13. If, okay, that's the first word in this verse, which is a conditional statement. If this, then that. Well, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, and what that means idiomatically in, in Hebrew is if you stop trampling my Sabbath. But, and then he explains what he means um, after, after that. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and instead call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. And then in verse 14, it says, Then you shall delight in Yahweh, and I will cause you to ride on the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of Yahweh has spoken. These are powerful words, and they're, they're words that, were, that the Spirit of Yahweh used to call me out of Babylon in Egypt because I was called out with three words, honor my Sabbath. And they weren't just simply words passing through my ears. They were, they were words that changed my life, changed who I was, changed my walk. As I set that day aside, for me, that day became the cornerstone of my faith. It became the day upon which I would read the scripture, pray, and sing praises. And in doing so, Yahweh opened up the scriptures to me. I saw things that I never saw before. Uh, previously, I would come to a section of scripture that was contrary to what the pastor would be teaching. And so I was like, well, it's just too deep for me, and I'd skip over it. It's like cutting something out of the scripture. And after a long time, I ended up with the Holy Bible. <laughs> Had all kinds of holes in it. But with the Sabbath day and with the understanding that the scripture is true from Genesis through Revelation, every word of it is true. And we need to allow scripture to explain scripture, to interpret scripture. And what that means is you can't separate the old from the new. The old is the new hidden and the new is the old revealed if I have that right. But right. anyway. <laughs> and thinking about that concept, I mean, in Revelation 2 and verse 17, it talks about us receiving a new name on a, on a stone, mm -hmm. something that will be everlasting. Well, if you go back and look at Isaiah 56, uh, starting in verse 4, for example, through 6, it says, For thus says Yahweh, to even the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and, and choose what pleases me and, and holds fast my uh, agreement, then to them I will give in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name, which will not be cut off. Verse six says also the foreigners, even the foreigners. I mean, we, we hear all the time, John, about, well, that was for the Jews. And they, you know, like a little <laughs> smirker, you know, well, that's strange. Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just for the Jews. It's for all of Israel. It's for all who would join and do the Father's will and the house rules would apply. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, also the foreigners who join themselves to Yahweh to minister to him and to love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants, everyone who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and holds fast to my agreements. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Talk about cornerstone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's in, it's interesting. It, it's for me, it's not so much that it's all about Israel, because Israel was a small, weak nation that Yahweh chose, in which He could demonstrate His power and strength. To be an example to all the nations. Well, it's yeah. a metaphor for us. I mean, mm -hmm. we're of the flesh. Uh, we're weak. We're, we are powerless in our lives. There's no way that we, on our own, can make it into the kingdom. 
uh, and that's not the purpose of the law anyway. The purpose of the law is to teach us what is right and what is wrong, what is sinful and what is not, mm -hmm. what is righteous. Exactly. And, and so no one is going to get into the kingdom by simply obeying the law of Yahweh. But Messiah came, and he, is, he was a physical representation of the word of Yahweh. And he's asked us to follow him, to do in the same way that he did, to walk in, in the light. Mm -hmm. um, and going back to this verse in Isaiah 53 where it talks about uh, take your foot away from the Sabbath. Don't do your pleasure. Don't do your, your, um, um, your own ways. And ways uh, typically refers to the ways of the nations. Uh, if we will honor him, then he will bless us. And he says that we ride on the high places of the earth. And if you, if you understand what high places means, it means those places that were set apart to worship uh, the gods of the nations. Okay, so we, riding means to conquer. You'll conquer, essentially, false worship, false doctrines. Um, as prophesied in Revelation 2, verses 25 to 27. Revelation 2, 25. But hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes, overcomes what? Overcomes the world and its temptations to sin, to transgress the, the law of Yahweh. And keeps my works, this is Joshua speaking to John, keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. And they, the nations, shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel. The scripture is clear, but if we read it from the standpoint of false doctrines, of teachings of man, um, successionism, uh, dispensationalism, mm -hmm. um, from the point of view of the Roman Empire, emperor who created his own religion, if we read the scripture from that point of view, we are not going to see what it says. How difficult is it? And I understand it is. So it does require a lot of work to set aside. We're never going to forget what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. We're never going to forget that. But if we set it aside and read the scripture from the standpoint of the scripture. And we're talking from, from Genesis to Revelation. Genesis to Revelation. It's all true. It's the word of Yahweh referenced many times in the New Testament. Yeah. What is the word of Yahweh? They it's understood his, it. it. Well, yeah. <laughs> It's the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. It's his teachings. That's what, that's what the word law means. We're, we're talking about righteousness. In Psalm 119 and verse 172, it says, Let my tongue sing of your word. You know, we were saying earlier about <laughs> I love the Sabbath day. Uh, Let my tongue sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. Now, if we go over to the New Testament, which is just a different agreement. It it's, it's, doesn't do away with the instructions. It's right. just we're now in Messiah. We, are, we have that blood covering that is perfect, spotless for us, the Passover lamb. But in uh, verse 17 of 1 John 5, it says, All unrighteousness is sin, and there is uh, sin not leading to death. You know, one that you will uh, you know, ask Yahweh for forgiveness. You know, we, we do make mistakes so we can ask and be pardoned. You know, King David, wonderful <laughs> man, had a heart after Yahweh, but he sinned. And he repented. He ultimately understood he was, you know, wrong in Yahweh's sight, and he changed. Yeah. So we so, have the opportunity as well. Yeah. So is it really all that hard to obey the commandments? Not according to Philippians 4. Verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. It's in Messiah, who is the word of Yahweh, that we find our strength. We are weak. And um, Paul talks about how his strength is in his weakness. That is, recognizing our weakness, recognizing that we are fallen as our ultimate uh, you know, worldly father was Adam, um, we, are, we are changed into beings who can die. And it's not that, our, uh, that we have an eternal soul. Our soul can die, as Scripture talks about. Um, 
and what Yahweh promises is that uh, there will be rest for our souls um, in the seventh day, um, which day has been set apart from creation. In Genesis 2, verses 1 through 3, we read, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day Elohim ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all the work which Elohim had created and made. Did he, did he rest because he was tired? <laughs> I don't think so. No. No, it's... it's I mean, when we go to work and we work eight hours and we come home, we want to rest because we're tired. There's no such thing as, as Elohim, as Yahweh, being tired. Mm -hmm. He rested for, for the sole purpose of giving us a time when we could devote our time and our attention, our whole lives, our souls, our, mm -hmm. our strength to Him. And He set it apart. We can't undo that. It's not, we don't have the, that authority or that uh, means to do that. Right. And um, in Hebrews 12, uh, verses 1 and 2, we read, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance, that which, which uh, tighten, is tightened around us, <laughs> and the sin, which is the transgression of the law of Yahweh, let's set aside every encumbrance, uh, and the sin, which so easily entangles us, being of the flesh. And let us run with endurance, with patience, the race that is set before us. And what is that race? We're racing to what? We're racing to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I imagine that, I'm, I'm picturing that narrow way <laughs> oh, sure. leading through that, that narrow gate. And we're running a race. Um, it speaks to me of how few people there are going to be on that, on that way and mm -hmm. how many people are going to be on that broad way that leads to destruction. The broad way being those who um, worship uh, falsely with false doctrines. Mm -hmm. But we're told to seek His kingdom first in our lives and His righteousness. Mm -hmm. And as we've always seen, His righteousness mm -hmm. are His ways. Right. Yahshua is... Um, the, the author and finisher of the entire universe. He created the universe and he will save us. And it is in the, the two versions of the Ten Commandments that we find creation and redemption. <laughs>